now. So we're looking at HubSpot for marketing teams. And again, for anyone that has not been, who's not familiar with me, uh, my name is Lyndon Braffitt. And every day that I do this, I'm always going to think of something that's different to put in this section. So the simple things that I, that I have to repeat is that I am, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot, a lot of the information that you are looking at or from me that you would like to know more about me, you can find that on LinkedIn. There's a lot of information there. However, one thing that people are not familiar with is that I'm an actual, so actually a certified HubSpot solutions provider uh, in Trinidad and Tobago. I initially was the first one. Um, now you have one or two more, but I would like to say I'm maybe the most active one at present. More importantly than that though, I am a firm believer in teaching people how to fish. Now that means a lot. And I know that some of you all will be familiar with, some of you all will be familiar with, um, yeah, some of you all would be familiar with the saying, teach a man how to fish or give a man a fish, but then teaching him how to fish is a lot more important. I kind of paraphrased it. And that is the goal behind these sessions, right? So we are covering the following. So we want to go through a simple agenda and the agenda will be going through three to four challenges that marketers are facing right now. We're also going to be covering why they are experiencing them, some recommendations. We're going to talk a little bit about how, how HubSpot supports that. And then we are going to go into the back end a little bit of HubSpot. So check this out. And uh, I want you all to maybe give me a, a yes or a no. Marketing has an integral part to play in an organization's growth, right? So what I'd like to get from you all is a simple yes or no. And oh, I have my co-host here with me today, which is Adana Narain. And Adana, what, when you get the information, I'm going to talk to everybody, right? Yeah. When you get the information, I'd like, I like for you to maybe give me a little bit of a, a, a summary of what everyone has been able to, has been saying so far. So let me know via yes or no as to how many of you guys believe that marketing has an integral role to play in an organization's growth. Give you guys just like about a couple seconds as it relates to that. Where is it down? What has been the overall um, consensus? I am seeing here that the overall consensus yes. is yes. The overall consensus is yes. Right. So we all on the same. So we agree that marketing has an integral role to play as it relates to the growth of an organization. But here's a question. Marketing's budgets and initiatives are sometimes the first to be cut as it relates when, especially when the organization is, some, is in some sort of crisis, whether it's COVID, whether it's the sales performance of the organization is low, whatever it is, all of a sudden people start holding back on marketing budgets. The other area that people hold back on, strangely enough, is training budget. So you always tend to find marketing budget getting affected and then HR has money to put aside to do some training, but the organization is saying, well, you know what, boy, I don't even know if we could do that. All right. And um, I'm not going to wait for a poll on this, but you all can just again, drop your, drop your comments in the, in the, sorry, drop your responses in the comments as to whether you agree with this or not, especially those of you guys who are working within organizations as to whether or not that you agree that marketing's budgets is sometimes one of the first areas to get affected as it relates to holding back when an organization is going through particular challenges. All right. So the question will be, well, why is that? Why is it that we actually having those challenges? Well, I'm saying this, a lot of this is coming from me working with companies, sitting down, having conversations with organizations. Um, I do a lot of just open conversations with companies, but I'm also coming from the standpoint of having, let's say, 15 plus years of experience working with, and out of that 15, I had 10 with one um, large organization being Massey. And I've seen a lot of the things that's going to be coming up in this presentation. I've seen a lot of that coming up, but then I've also seen it in smaller and my, so micro, medium and large organizations. 
The main reason, guys, is that there's an inability right now to show the return on investment between marketing activities and company goals. I'll read that again. There's an inability to show the return on investment between marketing activities and a company's goals. And it's not because, and I don't want this to seem as though marketing is just not doing anything, but a lot of the times we are not getting the kind of return that the organization is looking for in many different areas, right? And genuinely because of the fact too that sometimes it's not clearly set. So let me give you an example. This is a true story, right? So an employee, I'm sitting in, a, in, in, a, in an organization uh, doing some work with a client and the, uh, an employee says, hey boss, really cool post you all have on social media, but I really, really like it, you know? And the manager said, all right, well, cool. That's, that's really cool. Thanks. But by the way, have you gotten any calls or any sales from it as yet? And the employee said, no. And this was actually a director. So I did using the word boss. And the director said, hmm, well, I'm not sure how cool that is then. Why would they be saying that? It's because from a director standpoint, marketing is initially seen as an expense. Right? Those things are me spending money. I'm not getting any rate of return. I'm not getting back any return whatsoever. And for him to be asking that question, it means to me that there was a gap in relation as to what he was expecting coming back from his initiatives because he's spending money with an organization to do some social media work. But over the time that has been passing, he's not seeing any returns, right? Every expense this is something that I see. You mentioned to me that I, I believe in as it relates to business. Every expense must be offset by a revenue, some sort of revenue, some sort of income generating activity. Because if I'm putting money out, then there should be something coming back to give me some level of profit because we are in the space of business. So what would have happened there is that later on, the contract with that particular digital, digital marketing agency was canceled approximately two months after that conversation. Why? because of the level of alignment between what they were doing and what the organization was looking for. Again, alignment is really, really important. So, so while, they would, while they were doing certain things and putting stuff out on social media, and yes, they were getting the likes and people were, 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 were sharing stuff. Again, why am I doing this? For what reason? Is it just I'm doing it for brand awareness? Is it that I'm just doing it for... I don't know, am, am I doing it for sales? At the end of the day, as I was saying, from uh, giving you the perspective of a CEO, every expense must, be off, must have an offsetting revenue. And that goes from salaries of any department. So if, if I'm running a sales department and I have to spend $50,000 in salaries, then that sales team must be making $50,000 in revenue. So I could, I could support them, right? If I'm spending... Um, X amount of dollars in marketing generating marketing related activities, then I must get back a certain amount of revenue return coming back from that. But those things need to be clearly set. So again, alignment between what are all of my activities as it relates to what the goals are with the organization. But here's the thing though, there are two sides to every coin. It's not just, be, it's not just because the, the marketers didn't do a very good job, right? The other side to that coin is this. I have, a, I have a, I've spoken to a number of different people in different industries, so I'm going to give you two examples, all right? Um, this is one of three organizations that I've spoken to along the lines of um, schools and higher education and stuff like that, right? And one person said to me sometime in October of last year, year before, you know what, Lyndon, boy, listen, we've had healthy lead flow. We're actually bringing in the leads, but somewhere along the line, it gets lost when we pass it on to admin or we pass it on to the sales team. So... How can, how can a, 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 a someone in digital marketing or someone in marketing at the marketing department be held accountable if they are doing their part, but the sales team still dropping the ball, right? Again, two sides to every coin, right? Here's another one. This is from a marketing manager. And he's saying to me, listen, I'm having a hard time getting the older heads, his seniors, right? Which are the directors and the CEOs and the CFOs to really see the value in the activities that I'm actually doing. Right now, it's not, may not be because, may, it may not be because it is frivolous activities, but somewhere along the line, what, what, what those guys, what those, what those seniors are, are supposed to be seeing 
they are not seeing it. So the, the information that he needs to bring back to them based upon his activities and the expense after a while is going to seem as though it's, you know, this, I'm not getting back the rate of return. And if they would have been burnt in the, in the beginning, it's all going to be harder for them to invest in the future, right? And this, this is a, a, a scenario as it relates to marketing generated activities and the scenarios that's happening within marketing teams and of course with digital marketing professionals, anyone who's providing a service of marketing, whether you're working within an organization or not, all of these scenarios that I just brought and there, there's many, it's a very complex issue when it comes to marketing, when it comes to sales, when it comes to bringing in revenue. I don't have that slide in this particular presentation, but my good friend, Risa Gooden, Risa is a Trinidadian that lives, that is based out in Israel. And um, she actually has the number two, um, the second highest earning um, HubSpot agency out there in Israel. But one of the things that she's always said to me, she said, Lyndon, a lot of the things that you mentioned in here, I experienced it in Israel as well. The thing is, is that the alignment between marketing and sales and marketing and the organization is a little bit off, right? Because over time, what we've really focused on a lot is, um, you know, the, 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 the nice campaigns and the customer service appreciation things. But there's really so much more that's involved when it comes to the growth of the organization. So here are a couple of recommendations that I want to make to you guys, right? Right, so I'm just type of headset. So you, again, let me know if you guys are still hearing me clearly. Right, recommendation number one. First and foremost, there must be proper organizational alignment. It means that your marketing agency, your marketing department needs to have a clear idea as to what are the goals of the organization. Because right now in certain organizations, it is very siloed. Like you have marketing and then you have sales and then you have service. They do not work together, right? Even if you hire a digital marketing person, that digital marketing person only speak, sorry, only does work specifically, only does work specifically with marketing. Marketing has never, when I was doing budgets in, in um, a couple of years ago with, um, with Massey, no one ever came, no one from marketing ever came to me and said, okay, so what is the number you guys are trying to hit, right? And let me see how I can align some of, the, some of our marketing strategies to help you guys achieve. That is a very important approach to take in business because it's all one organization. And it's also the approach that all organizations have to be taking now. So apart from just doing things like making sure that your brand looks good and you're getting proper sponsorship and they're delivering on your sponsorship packages and whatever you would have spent money on, you need to now be able to still say, listen, I need to align my activities so that my directors are happy, my customers and my sales teams are happy, and then for all the work that my marketing department or my marketing agency is doing for my customers, then I can give them proper return on investment. What's the other thing? Now, somewhere around April, a couple of weeks ago, I would have shown this slide as it relates to, this is my representation as to what a buying process is as to what a sales process is, looks like, right? There needs to be better alignment, and I was just kind of hinting to that, between what marketing is trying to do and what sales is trying to do as well. So if sales is selling to a specific demographic or they want to go after a new product line, or sorry, a new, a new customer base because there's a new product line, then marketing has to support that. A lot of the times, you tend to find salespeople saying, yo, we don't get nothing from marketing, yo. And that is not good because of the fact that, or they may say, well, I didn't even know marketing was doing something because there isn't enough communication in between departments as to listen, what is it that we're all trying to achieve? It's all one organization. If every company has to pay bonuses, they pay bonuses from the same revenue that is generated from the sales efforts. So why isn't the sales efforts across the board, right? Risa also mentioned that marketing's KPIs also has to change. Marketing's KPIs meaning, meaning that the KPIs shouldn't just really be on the branding activities and stuff like that, but it should really now fall in lines as to, listen, what, what revenue it is that we're trying to hit for the year? And let me see as to how I can start generating certain leads to help the sales team achieve that. 
how I can help the sales managers or the managers that's, that's responsible for those divisions um, get enough leads so that we can hit that number. Again, taking a different mindset approach as it relates to how we look at our marketing, our support, because marketing is a support department to our sales team. All right? Another thing is this. Um, remember I was talking about our expense. I would really love to see a lot of see, sorry, of marketing professionals level up. And when I say level up, what I mean is that I am still seeing marketing, especially now, a lot of the marketing activities that we are doing right now, or you might be spending money on, your marketing department, your marketing department should really and truly be doing a lot of things that you're hiring outside for. Like again, so this goes back to where I started from, give a man a fish, right? If I'm a marketer, my main goal is to make sure my team can do as much of, <clears throat> excuse me, of, of the things that we have to outsource for, and I will only outsource based upon if I don't have the infrastructure, if I don't have the skill set or whatever it is. I remember some years ago, I went into an organization, I was selling um, something called managed print services. And I was sharing with the guy, the IT director, I was telling him all the things that, that my team will be able to support him on. His response to me was, Lyndon, if I have to spend money for you to come in and do that for me, then I, I have to fire some of my people because I don't know what, I wouldn't be sure what they're doing. Now, I had to sit back and really absorb that. Now, it, because it hit me, I was like, that means I'm not going to get a deal, right? <laughs> but I was being a little bit insensitive initially, but really and truly, I understood where the guy came from, was coming from. He's like, listen, I love the information. Could you help us get to that point? But really and truly, my team is supposed to be able to do a lot of the things that we want to outsource for. So I would really love to see a lot more marketers level up in relation to their skill sets, learn certain things about um, SEO, learn certain things about digital marketing, learn certain things about inbound, because you guys aren't, aren't always out there on the field. However, you have to be able to support the sales team and the organization in bringing in revenue, All right? Um, that is as it relates to skill sets. And we also want to then take a look at technology. Technology is a heavily underutilized resource. As I was saying this a couple of Fridays ago throughout the Caribbean, All right? And this is me doing stuff because every time I engage with a client. Um, I, I've really been trying to do a survey and I started out in the later part of last year, so from December into now, with the information gathered so far coming from Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago. But if you notice here, everything that I would have shown in the slide, tech-based is supported by the same reason that you guys are here today, by the HubSpot platform. HubSpot gives you the ability to really do everything here, but understand this. I'm not just showcasing this from the standpoint to say, well, this is, your, this is your silver bullet. HubSpot is not the silver bullet. Your mindset is where the silver bullet lies. This is where you have to make a change as it relates to how you think, yeah, as to how you think about your um, contribution towards the organization's goals. But what tools are you using? How do you intend to level up? How are you creating a better alignment? How are you interacting with your other departments? And how are you offering your skill set of yourself and your team to the organization? If you notice again, so HubSpot gives that marketer, that digital marketer, the ability to talk to its seniors. It gives the ability to bring in um, particular leads and traffic. It helps sales teams close. It helps us like measure. It creates the opportunity to do, excuse me, as we will say, um, better alignment with sales, making, giving sales the ability to sometimes interact with better qualified customers. But again, it has to start with a philosophy. And that philosophy falls back into understanding that your buyer's journey has to align to your sales and marketing strategy, which is down to the bottom. What are you using as your magnet to attract customers that's researching first before they even come to, before they even ask for sales. Marketing needs to be putting out content to raise the awareness from the Ada principle. So that when customers say, you know, I remember seeing something from this person, you know, or raising the, being, being, so, being so aware in the market, excuse me, being so aware in the market that as soon as a customer thinks higher education, they either think one or two schools. As soon as a customer thinks uh, automotive, 
you either think one or two dealerships. As soon as they think tech, you're thinking, um, okay, I know a couple of technology companies that, I, that we can go after when it comes to this. You want to be, you want to have such a strong presence that you're attracting the customers easier, but it then flows straight into your sales funnel. So here's an example. So now we're going to, I'm going to do a couple of examples as it relates to, excuse me, what that collaboration looks like. Cause again, we were, we were talking about not being able to justify a few things, right? So here is it that we are looking at the back end of HubSpot graphically. I'm doing a couple of screenshots before I, I go into the back end itself, whereby here's an example of sales and marketing collaborating on an initiative. But guess what? There are a number of deals that's coming in here, right? You have offline sources that's coming from the sales team. You have direct traffic, social media, and email marketing that's coming, coming in from the marketing department. If a, if a sales team's objective is to have a, if, if, if a sales department's objective is to have, as they would say, um, you want to have a certain amount of sales activity for, excuse me, the month, then how is the marketing department helping my team stay active? Because these days with traffic, with admin work and with everything else, it is sometimes very hard to make, to, let's say for instance, to meet 10 customers, but I can maybe try calling 10 customers, but it will be so much easier easier if that department is helping my department support my department by bringing in certain amount of qualified leads so that my team could start checking the boxes to say yes i've got i have the ability to do some meetings this week but those meetings came from marketing or yes i would have found a couple of them for my by myself but the customer was already familiar because they saw something that marketing put out understand the relationship it is a team it is a team effort. Here's also something else again. How interesting would it be if it is a, when it's time for you to show, right, that you are really going after a targeted audience? Let's look at what's happening on your left. If, if, if the sales team is saying, listen, we want to get this particular demographic, but we need to host events. Well, those are events these days wouldn't have to be, wouldn't be a matter of just going to a trade show. It wouldn't just be a matter of, um, you know, just putting on a sale and throwing it out there on social media. No, you can have strategic targeted events like this webinar, right? That brings in, that attracts the right kind of people. But there's something called marketing where both sales and marketing sits down together and they say, here's what, this is the demographic that we want to go after. So this would be what we call our ideal customer profile. These are the personas and this is what's important to them. Marketing, I need for you to keep pushing this type of message so that you can get the CEOs or you can get the CSRs or you can have a customer if you look on your right hand side of the screen. So engage with your website that when it's time to call this customer, your sales team is calling the customer based upon looking at the history of what the customer has been searching through your website for. That is no longer a cold call. I'm not saying cold calling is dead, but, but just taking an approach and using technologies like HubSpot warms up that cold call. It's no longer that cold anymore because there's a relationship. There's you creating a magnet to pull customers in, or you have customers that's so warm on your site that they peruse and they have to be looking for something. Nobody's just going to browse through your site 20 different pages on two visits. Nah, the customer is looking for something. But then again, here's the other thing too. How much of us, how many of us have websites where customers are okay to peruse? Meaning that how much, how are our websites educating anyone? Because a lot of the times our websites are very static. Our websites are, this is our vision. This is our mission. This is how long we've been in business, right? Because it's a little bit of a beat your chest. We are not educating anyone as it relates to how we can help them. Certain things that you should be doing right now. I'm sure in any one of your industries that for those of you all that's listening to me, I know you guys can share information right now as to what customers should be doing. How there must be certain things that your marketing team or you as a marketing agency can, div, can, can push to your customers to say, this is what we want to start sharing with customers. You know why? Because if we don't do any marketing during this particular period, because again, it moved from the 15th or the 20th of April to now the 30th, and we don't know if it's going to go later on into May. So then does that mean that you're irrelevant? Your sales team can no longer sell on the field, but can they now start selling digitally? Your marketing may have taken a hit, but there are a lot of things that you can still be doing, right? Here's another one based upon, again, 
your traffic. I shared this particular slide and I felt it was a good case study to share. If you look at the dates, and, and I, still have, I, I still have visibility to this particular customers back, as a matter of fact, I had a conversation with them this morning, all right? They are still receiving requests from customers. They can't deliver to anybody, but customers are home on their website looking for stuff, reading through stuff, all right? Because they've bought into the philosophy that we can still have some sort of presence. Mind you, they're not on social media. They don't do any LinkedIn. This morning, they're asking me how I can, how I can help them develop uh, certain things as it relates to LinkedIn. They don't do any good, strong social media, or, uh, Instagram or Facebook, but they have traffic on the website because customers are searching for information. There's things that they can use to read. So now what they're saying to me this morning is, Lyndon, you know what? I think it's time we start activating a little bit more that email marketing because we're seeing where customers are coming here. Customers are leaving information on the, on the database. They're not on social media. They're not on Instagram. They're not on Facebook. They are on our website. We want to we want to maximize and take care, take advantage of that. So here's where now I'm going to give you guys a little peek into the back end of HubSpot. All right. Um, if it is, are you all uh, okay with the information so far that I've shared? I want you all to just drop one or two comments in the comment section, just saying, a okay, you know, good information thus far. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I see Alicia is also saying here that the implementation of a marketing strategy um, is also a good idea and the development to mention, which is also very good. Yes, thanks, thanks a lot for that, Alicia. Um, <clears throat> Genevieve is saying, good, great recommendations. Thanks, Genevieve. All right, so let's take a look now at the back end of HubSpot. All right. So now there are a lot of cool things as it relates to HubSpot, and I, I, I'm going to try to not get caught up in showing too many. So we did good for time. We are 32 minutes in, so which means we can spend some time just looking at a few things as it relates to where is it I would have actually shown you guys as to how you can go about maximizing on certain things. So um, let, let's, let's start with exactly where it is. The first place that I normally like to show customers is really and truly along the lines of your reports your justification. Why am I spending this money, Mr. Marketer? Why, am I, why are you asking me for more budget? Well, the reason why I'm asking you for more budget is because of the fact that all of the activities that we've been doing so far for the month, these are the leads here that has been able, we've been able to generate from, um, from, the, from, all, from all of our campaigns. You said you wanted to start generating traffic. Well, these are the, this is the traffic that we've been able to generate, Mr. Director. And you can now pull these reports and share it with them. Direct traffic, so the sales team has been able to do their part. But guess what? Here's what we've been able to do. So the sales team has been able to do only 15, right? What we've been able to do, what is that? 15, 12, 7, and 4. My math is not 100%, so I'll say that as a what? That's 27, that's 34, somewhere around there, and 4. That's maybe about 41. But we've been able to generate 41 as it relates to contacts, because that's what this says here, contacts by source. So as opposed, we've, we've doubled the number of contacts based upon all marketing activities. And here's what, this is why you're spending the money with me. We're not doing this for followers. We're not doing this for likes. We want contacts. We want actual leads. So again, your marketing activity. And if it is that I were to go back to one slide and just, just bear with me a minute here. So let me show you something. Oops, no, sorry, wrong. I'm in the wrong, in the wrong presentation, right? So if you look back at one particular, if we talk about one particular slide where we look at the CEO and the CSR, one, one of them came from Instagram. But guess what? It wasn't just a like on Instagram. It wasn't a comment on Instagram. The person actually went and left content or left information on the Instagram platform. Sorry, on the, on the customer's website coming from the Instagram platform. So this is one way that you get to validate and show, yo, in times of crisis, you can't be cutting my budget right? You cannot be cutting my budget. And of course, my team isn't obsolete in a time of crisis because we have to take care. We have to look after our jobs, All right? Here again, if you want to do a different graphical representation, this is where all of the, is that purple? I'm not very sharp on colors, right? But if you look at it, we're looking at where the leads are concerned. And again, if we're looking at offline, I'm looking here, offline, they brought in eight leads Whereas marketing would have brought in a way more, right? Way more leads because that's what the, 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 the purple or lilac or whatever the color is, right? Um, 
marketing would have done more through direct traffic, which is your website, referrals, which is additional um, referral links that you would put on different social media platforms, social media in itself, and email marketing. Again, I am showing you, Mr. Director, this is, this is what my team is doing. This is how relevant we are. This is why you need us to do what, to do what you need, what we need to do for you, All right? Um, and well, everything else here is just a matter of uh, your contacts as it relates to the number of visits. And now this is actually pretty cool. What you're seeing here is uh, it's, it just refreshed itself, right? Because HubSpot is always refreshing. It's, it's live. It's always on the back end of your website. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It's always the forms that you leave out on the, out on the internet. It's always there. So as soon as something happens with a form, it updates itself. So let's take a, a look at something else here as it relates to your forms, right? Now, there must be certain areas of activity. And I, I, I'm not here to school anybody who's been in marketing for however long. But there are certain things as it relates to social media activity that's real important for us for us to understand. Again, so we put in something on. So we're talking to the, we, from, we haven't had the conversation between marketing departments, excuse me, and all the relevant sales departments. Let's say whether it's an, if it's an FD far fund, let's say if it's a Massey, let's say whichever it is, because you may have one marketing department that is facilitating 10 different divisions, right? So that person or that team, they have a lot of work to do. How is it that you now get to show? So within HubSpot, you have something where you can do, HubSpot gives you the ability to do a number of things. You can create ads and those ads tie into your Google Analytics, it ties into your Facebook, it ties into your LinkedIn. If you run the ads on those platforms, it actually shows up, excuse me, it shows up in your HubSpot, right? So you now have, you have the ability of running reports from right within here. I don't have any ads running, but I'm just using this as a backend example to show you. Here's the other thing too, this is super important. And this again too is where I'm talking about marketing departments need to, up, need to upskill because I have no, there's no issues with, with, um, with folks, with agencies doing things like social media work and stuff like that. But these things could be done in-house. These are skills, I believe, that if your title is marketing, you're supposed to know how to do those things, right? So this is a marketing campaign that we want to run, right? For, for, uh, figuratively speaking. But we want to push this campaign out to different audiences. And this might actually blow your mind a little bit. There's something called um, Facebook Pixels. And what the Facebook pixel does is that it creates a pixel for everyone that actually visits, visits your Facebook site, Facebook page, and also your website. And what it does, it keeps tracking that person every time they come back and forth. It also creates a profile of that person, right? So you can create your, your Facebook pixel on Facebook, excuse me, but you can also have your Facebook pixel created or tagged into HubSpot. Check this though. I have a Facebook pixel here that's built in that I created, and now I created a lookalike because again, I am looking at expanding my business, right? So here's a Facebook pixel, but it says BB, GD, GY, JM, and LC. For me, this represents Barbados, Guyana, Jamaica, Grenada, St. Lucia. Here's the interesting thing though. If I look across here, it is also telling me the size of those markets. So I'm already seeing, if I need to pay attention to anything, I better than pay attention to Jamaica because Jamaica's Facebook pixel that I created that looks very, that's a lookalike similar to the profile I created in Trinidad and Tobago, there's a, there's a, a potential market size of 8,400 lookalikes. Now again, what can you do with that kind of information? Because you can now bring this information forward, especially if your, your business wants to go regional, right? And you could say, listen, we are seeing that there's a demographic out there in Jamaica, there's a demographic out there in Guyana with 2,900, right? Um, that we think that we want to go after, right? And then so, but you can, you can justify it. It's not just a matter of saying, yeah, well, we want to do business in Guyana or we want to do business in Jamaica. No, we want to do business and here's why we want to do business. Because there's a demographic out there that HubSpot is showing us because it's tied into that Facebook pixel and it's picking that, that, picking that up from off of the website. And you have the ability to analyze those things. So when you run your campaigns and you push it, or again, there's nothing here because I personally have no campaigns running, but all of that information is available on the back end. Again, good information to, to, from, to create more strategies for the rest of your team and your organization, 
but again, to show your worth and your value as a marketer, all right? Even as a matter of, listen, let's say for instance, if I was an individual, let's say me doing it for myself, Lyndon Bradford, my own organization, this information is also just as good for me because I can, I can create my own lookalike and then spread it across the region, all right? So that is one as it relates to ads. Facebook also, sorry, not Facebook, uh, Housepot also gives you the ability to do email marketing. Now, I know a lot of us, we use Constant Contact, MailChimp, and whatever other platform that's out there, all right? Um, but within a, the last couple of years, because HubSpot being a CRM understands that marketing, sales, and service are three important components to business, those things are things that they have baked into the platform. And one of the key areas is where they talk about staying, keeping abreast with your customers, don't allowing, not allowing customers to, to, to go dormant or you going dormant on your customers for too long. So definitely what's happening here now is that you can now use your email marketing with the same with your with your customer base and start building out what building up what is it I mentioned from before. Once you identify and then identify what the customer profiles are, once you identify the industries, you create your lists, you create segmentation, and you start targeting those specific audiences. Yes, I can do a big blast, you know, but sometimes the big blast is like putting throwing mud on the wall and hoping something sticks but we need to be a little bit more strategic. What the information, so let's say we're talking to marketing, sorry, marketing is talking to sales, and marketing says, okay, so you wanna run a campaign doing X? Fine, tell me who is it that you need to be talking to and what is important to those people? So I will say, well, listen, we need to be talking to marketing, sorry, we need to be talking to, to CEOs, we need to be talking to operational operations people, we need to be talking to uh, executive directors, you name it. And marketing can now say, okay, well, here's what's important to those guys because this is, this is their persona. That is as simple as looking up people's job description. It ain't rocket science. <laughs> if a customer is telling me, well, Linda, I need to get help in building out a, a customer profile. And I say, well, tell me about the people who you're trying to reach. What is their portfolio? What's important to them? That kind of thing. What's the average age? You know, how long, how long they, may be in, they may be in those positions? You know, that kind of thing. And those are things that I would Google. Right? If, the, if the customer can't tell me, and in most instances, the salesperson, they're not thinking along those lines. They're just saying, yeah, boy, we need to talk to procurement. Okay, but what does procurement need to see in front of them for them to say, yes, come in and talk to us? That is where marketing supports. All right? So you have the ability of creating email marketing campaigns and pushing it out to your audience. Right? And I'll actually give you guys an example with one that I would have done recently. Let's look at the B2B tech stack. Right, and what it does, it gives you the ability to build your own market, email marketing campaign. But again, you get the ability to look at all of the analytics in the back end. And if anyone has been, if anyone is familiar with things like Constant Contact and Mailchimp, cool. right? This is what it looks like. Very, very simple, almost identical. However, the information on your back end, I'm not saying it's any way different, but it all fits within your CRM. What happens here is that whatever work that you do pushing out, once you let sales know that, listen, we did this thing, are we going to be monitoring it and pushing the information back to you? As soon as one of your customers that you push that information for say, hey, can I get, can I get information on the cost of this? Or can you give me a little bit more information on the features? Or when is this particular course? Or when is this particular um, product going to, be, going to be available? That is when marketing now says, yo, talk to sales. The handoff is a lot easier and it's better aligned. What it also does, it gives the salesperson the ability to now look within the CRM and look at the history, look to see how engaged that they were before, during, and after the campaign. Again, that is no longer a cold call. It is no longer, excuse me, the engagement strategy is a lot different, which makes it, a, which builds the confidence of the sales professional, right? Uh, I want to show one pretty cool thing though that, that, that happens here with, um, with email marketing before I move on to it, which is because of the fact that HubSpot has been working so well with um, different platforms from the standpoint of integration. Um, this is one, as I would call it, a, a, a nice to have. You normally get five templates that's standard that you can work with, but you have a wealth of templates that's down here to the bottom that you can use. But what's cool with it, and I'm just gonna choose any one template here right now, is that HubSpot has a relationship, a strong, a very close relationship 
with something that we all use right now, which is, and I'm just going to do a quick drag and drop, right? So let's say, for instance, I want to create this particular image, which is here, but I want to include the image. If you guys look down to the bottom, all these are my nice little images, but now I can actually create the image with Canva. And if I say I want to create an email banner, it's so cool that because of that relationship, I can now work in from my Canva account on the back end of HubSpot to create, to start creating, because again, Canva is a strong marketing tool. I don't have to tell you all that. You all know that, right? So it's a strong, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, it's a strong marketing tool that you now have baked into the back end. So you don't have to leave one platform to come and do something else. I can just choose this particular platform. I can say, okay, yeah, going with this, click save, right? It can also open up the folder for all of your respective designs. And I can start building, yeah, I can start building my email marketing campaign from the partnership between Canva and, um, and, uh, and HubSpot. Another thing that's also very important as I was sharing with you guys with, um, with segmentation is that you get the ability to create segments within HubSpot, right? And why would that be important? Again, every message is not for everybody. So I would have sent you guys a message twice today, one at half past, and then the other one at 10 to, at 10 to 12. What that would have done, if you notice here, I would have already created a segment, a list, a specific list, because I can't send this to all of my 300 and something contacts. Not everybody registered. Only the people that registered will get the reminders. Same thing applies. Only the people that are relevant to the email marketing campaign is who you should be really reaching out to. Do not or stop, I'm going to say it like that, stop just blasting emails out to everybody because the messages don't always resonate. That is why you have something called low open rates. But if I send it to, to 31 people, I am sure my open rate would look pretty good. You know why? Because this information was relevant to you all. Yeah? So it's a matter of relevance as it relates to, excuse me, Relevance as it relates to who is your message targeted for. Again, if I that's why I broke up. That's why I broke up the, the this session into into four sales teams and sales professionals, marketing teams and marketing professionals, senior executives are tomorrow, and on Friday we have um, uh, entrepreneurs. Four totally different sessions, so it's not a one size fit all for everyone, right? Another thing that I really, really like is forms, right? So coming out of this, you get the ability of creating forms within HubSpot. So before, um, people would have used things like Jot Forms, right? But I can create forms. So I have forms here for all of the programs that's running this week. And what it does is that the forms give me an idea as to who would have signed up, right? And again, I'm seeing it because I'm tying it tightly along the lines as to what is it that we were talking about today. So I get, a, I get an understanding as to who would have signed up to come to the program so I can, I can take a look at what the submissions were. So I see the names, right? But I also get to analyze. I get to analyze where has this been most successful? Because if I'm realizing that I'm striking, I'm striking iron here, you know, it's, it's, it's hot in this particular area, then there's something that I'm doing well that I want to keep doing. But before we would have just gone with a hunch, right? And a hunch is really nothing these days. Also, if you desire you want to look at it from this standpoint, we can also look at it from your submissions. And if you look here, again, you can tell where all of your work or all of your success is coming from, from a marketing department or from a market or from an agency. If you're in a digital marketing, you're running it, connect HubSpot to the back end for your customer, right? And run it and bring this kind of analytical data back to them because, again, we don't want them questioning the money that they're spending with us. We don't want them questioning the money they are spending on our department. If it is that we were showing this from up front, nobody had asked me anything. I'm showing to you, right? This is what we need to be doing. And this also helps you sell new initiatives. You get the support. Let's say, for instance, a sales manager was getting problems um, with, with uh, getting buy-in from a, from a director or from a, a CEO as to which direction to go. He can now collaborate with you and say, listen, I need for you to bring that data to this meeting because I need to move, move forward with this. Again, it's alignment towards an organizational goal because you're supporting people in their business to grow, right? Um, 
another area here as it relates to <clears throat> excuse me looking at different things as it relates to the tools and again there are many different areas that i can go about talking as it relates to hubspot we're going to i'm going to stop in a little while and allow you guys to, to to answer to ask questions because sometimes the questions opens up the space to go a little bit deeper but one area that i really really love and this is why people's websites are important is prospects right so hubspot because it ties into the back of your website you can also look at your sales analytical content you can look at your traffic analytics but you get this when you when you when you're invested in a certain level in hubspot i think it's either um, professional or starter right because you now get to have a deeper appreciation as to your traffic on your site but so apart from just the marketing analytics you get to look at prospects now what exactly is prospects and this is where again whatever is on your website that is helping you generate traffic gives you the ability to be a strong marketer this is really telling me who not the individual but which organizations have really been visiting your website who's been on your website looking for certain things perusing certain things and if you're looking here now amplia communications is a network this is my website we're looking at here so this is my back end right so amplia communications is a telecommunications organization so i know a lot of people not from amplia the organization but are using amplia maybe they have amplia in their homes right and they would have either been on my site or they actually on this webinar now or a number of other, other different things right but if i look at tn tech i am seeing that people from tn tech would have visited my website three times which is in the second line but they have four page views it also gives me a breakdown as to the industry and i set up this report for myself because i want to know which company what industry they're in right but look at this other one here look at as brighton as brighton would have visited four for four this was on the first of april what hubspot also does hubspot gives you the ability again and this is all in a matter of being strategic right it tells me if i look on the left side here it was direct traffic but there's something okay so they don't have any related companies so i want to look for one that has related companies for you to give you an example because what hubspot does the same way that you can create a google pixel and you create something called a profile hubspot also looks so we have maritime financial again they've been on my site so maybe someone from insurance is looking at um my website maybe reading the blogs because i do have one or two blogs that's related to insurance within there uh, but there are a lot of blogs that relates to sales as well that's in there right but what it also did it also gave me and i'll just wait for it to come up it also gave me a profile of other companies so they're saying well listen if one organization like this is looking at your site well then maybe here are four other organizations that may just be interested that you may you can just actually profile as well it may be taking a little bit long but so i'll just kind of talk it through all right so this is actually giving me tattle it's giving me institute of marine affairs i'm not familiar with the other two in the middle they could be international organizations or regional organizations right but i have two local references that it's pulling based upon profiles right so again it's a lot of deep insight but it gives you the ability to be very very strategic i want to just jump out on a limb here and say something because i just mentioned something about insurance there is no reason excuse me so ronda is asking where it pulled it from it pulled it from the internet all right so it created a profile from maritime and then it, 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 it did a it did a duplicate to say okay if maritime is an insurance company and it's coming from trinidad and tobago or from the region what are what are the other companies on the internet so it scans the internet it looks at other pro, pro company profiles based upon how they have their seo setup search engine optimization setup and then it creates profiles to say okay well this is an organization that you could look at as well i'll, I'll maybe show you one more as an example of this and then i'll kind of open it up to to um to, to some questions right there is no reason why i unless unless you guys are told and this is my folks who are in the insurance industry why an insurance agent cannot have his own blog or let's say you don't have a full-blown website let there's no reason as to why you cannot have that right because you could be writing your blog and using your blog from a marketing perspective to create broader awareness here's why when you and I have a conversation, that conversation only lives for the time frame that you want to have in that conversation. However, when you have an, uh, 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 when you have um, when you do some sort of marketing, you create a post, you do a video, or whatever it is, and you put it out there on social media, the shelf life of that of that piece of content is as long 
as you take it down. It stays there. And then you can repurpose your content in so many different ways. So like for instance, what is it that we are doing here? Okay, so this is another example of um, the TTMF. And then it pulled um, Trinidad Building and Loan. This is the corner, it's on the corner of Queen and Shackland Street in Port of Spain. That's the second one. I'm not sure if familiar with um, who the first one is. So again, it helps you identify potential prospects. It's not telling you who. It is saying these are potential companies. And again, this is more ammunition to provide to your organization. All right? So uh, yeah, so I just want to make this note. So people who are, let's say, independents, right? Um, real estate agents. Um, insurance agents, you guys could be using your own blog and using HubSpot like this to generate traffic. A lot of the time, listen, I have no problems with, with, with social media, but here's the problem. So my, my only challenge with social media is social media doesn't belong to me. My website belongs to me. My content would stay on my website as long. So if Facebook decides to close up shop tomorrow, or Facebook crashes as, as, as it has a couple of times last year, then everybody's content, that's what people get in a hissy fit. I don't have to get in a hissy fit because of the fact that whatever I post on social media is a replication of whatever I have on, social, on my website. So I can easily point customers back to my website because my website carries a wealth of information than what is out there on social media. Social media is your top of the funnel. That's your awareness. You already can't give a customer a real insightful breakdown of services or products or whatever it is on social media, unless you're doing a long video. But you can do that on housing on your website because you want to understand traffic and you want to also own your space because guess what? You want to have a customer database. That's important. That's where you want it. Social media does not give you a customer database. You still have to take all that stuff and still write it down in your book. This is what you want to have. You want to be able to list out all of your prospects and then now when your prospects listed out, you break up your prospects into this pretty little thing that I have in the, in the middle here. Who's in automotive? Who's in C-suite? Who are HubSpot users? Who's in HR? Who's in marketing? Who's in real estate? You know why? Because I'm now understanding a little bit about my client base. I'm understanding a little bit more as to how I want to be strategic from a marketing standpoint. And I can get a new to any one of these people. Because again, if I'm in, if I'm in insurance, well, what would a C-suite want? Because his, his buying capacity is maybe a little bit higher. So I can possibly go after him with a higher portfolio or if I'm in real estate, how can I now market to this real estate person? How many people do I have in that, in that list? How do I market to that real estate person? Because their, their income might be a little bit different. Maybe they, would they be interested in selling their home and I can maybe get them into a new one. There are so many freaking ways, guys, that we can change the way that we sell by using the tools, but also by changing our mindset as to how we want to be strategic in sales. Now I can go on and on. Uh, and I, which I love to, <laughs> but I will stop there and I'm going to unmute everyone, right? And I'm going to allow you guys to point your questions. Um, now, we are already two minutes to one. The how long we go is now dependent upon you all, right? Because the questions no, sometimes normally drive it. I'm going to maybe allow two questions per person, right? Uh, because we have, uh, we have uh, let's say, we have a bit of a, we have 17 people inside the room right now. All right. So, um, who would like to go first with a question? You can either shoot it via text or you can shoot it via your um, via audio. Oh, you don't have to kill me with all those questions so quickly, guys. <laughs> oh, gosh. So I could only assume I would have maybe covered or given you guys enough information that there are no questions. Um, is there anything hello? that you have an interest in seeing? Uh, yes, someone said, someone said hello. Hello? Hi, you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Who, who is this? You can just, yeah, yeah, you can just give us your name and, and, um, and uh, you can just go with your question from there. Right, so this is Brent Louis. I am actually, I'm, I'm on the road today. So Hi, I, I don't What's have up? any questions, but um, great, great, um, great session. I would look over the, um, the, the, the recording as well as I'm on the road. I didn't get to see the slides as detail, but okay. I would look over the recording. It's a, a great session as usual. All right. Thank you very much, Brent. Anyone else? Is there anything that you guys would like to see? Oh, well, while we're doing that, I'll just give you a quick snippet in the back here to indicate 
that, <clears throat> excuse me, even from a marketing perspective, HubSpot gives you the ability to integrate with a number of different, so, so, excuse me, so Canva was just one, but HubSpot really integrates with, of course, your mailing platforms, it integrates with your auto, different automation platforms, which is things like Zapier. Um, I was showing some folks yesterday that it integrates with other areas for um, things like finance. So if you look here, you see QuickBooks. So yes, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you also have it integrating with things like WooCommerce, which so it, it ties directly. And as a matter of fact, anyone who's creating a website now or would have had a website before, especially on WordPress, it integrates on the back end of WordPress so that it gives you the ability to... Um, it gives you the ability to now start tracking and having those conversations, as I was saying before, with your with your with your customers, right? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So it, it it goes as in depth um, as possible, but again, the main goal behind this, guys, is that the work that we are doing here as marketers, and I'm no marketer. But I'm just saying this from a salesperson. I'll put it, put it to you like this, right? And I see, I see Genevieve has a comment, and I'll, men, I'll, men, I'll, make a, I'll mention Genevieve's comment just now. I have a friend of mine who just lost his job, and he was a marketer. He was in charge of, of he was a, a part of a marketing department of a, of a large division. As much as he was a friend, I had a challenge with how he was going about doing his work because I didn't feel, for me, he was bringing value to my department. Talking to one or two other direct other um, executives not too long after he was let go, right? And here's what they were saying. They were saying, yeah, but he was more so of a glorified marketing manager. That is not cool. Yeah? Because you see, they always hold on to sales. They would always hold on to salespeople. Salespeople are sometimes, the, the, they all, the, they, their, their lines don't get cut because an organization would always think, that the that you always need a salesperson, whether they're doing good or bad, I still need a body. That's how they, that's how that's how managers think. But really and truly, if 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 other marketing directors or managers were to really step up their game a little, and again, I'm not saying this because everybody doing a bad job, but there are other ways and there are new ways of showing how your value as to listen. This is what I do. I'm bringing leads to sales. Sales dropping the ball. Don't be, don't be looking at me. But again, it's really important now, and that's why I wanted to break it down because I have no preference. Yeah, I have no preference for. I'm gonna have to meet one person just for the sake of feedback. Yeah, I have no preference on any department. I never did. But I really, because I really want to see everybody come together to work towards that that particular goal. But at the end of the day, we have to take a little a change in the way that we go about doing our jobs. Whether again, whether you are into social media marketing, whether you're into digital marketing, and you're whatever services you're providing, or you're working with an organization in that department, right? We know, I know, you work on what you're trying to achieve, and I know sometimes it's hard to, to, to sell those initiatives because sometimes it may cost money, and you have um uh because I've I've had I've had, I've had my same friend he had a, a, a issue selling a new initiative, but he wasn't able to really show the value he was going to get back because again he didn't have analytics like this let me go let me go into to genevieve's co um, comment she said the content and information from these webinars allow me to really to really critically assess what we can do better at my institution right it's really an eye-opener and as you say um, a mindset shift and that's correct guys right so i always start every because you guys are new with me um i always start almost every session from the standpoint of mindset. My goal, my sorry, my, my motto is change, create, difference, achieve. It's part of the, the Opatri um, motto. Apart from attract, engage, commit, measure, that the, the second one is really along these lines of the sales philosophy. But from a, from, a, from a mindset standpoint, change starts there. And a lot of the times we've been selling, or from a, from a salesperson standpoint, we've been selling bad. From a marketing standpoint, we've been marketing bad. From a leadership standpoint we sometimes lead in bad and um what i what i'm really trying to do coming out of these things is really show people a different way not because i have the gospel but 
I just really took the time to really understand and assess what I believe is, is the right approach and try my best, especially for Trinidad and Tobago and the region, to bring it forward to you all because I want everybody to excel. That's always been me. All right, so again, if there are no further questions, guys, uh, in five, four, three, two, one, <laughs> I would say, okay, someone has just said, I unfortunately, unfortunately um, I have an important call to take, took, took me away, but very interesting. I look forward to the recording, so I will sh review. Okay, that's great. All right, so you guys have a really, really great afternoon. Thanks for spending your lunchtime with me, and we will catch up again. Peace. Take care. Bye-bye, folks.